Welcome to System Update. It's Bomber Tank. Call me Bomber. Call me Tank. And here we're talking about three different articles, one photography related, one technology related, and one video game related. Right now you're listening to an older episode, but there will be more in the future and new episodes at that. So thank you for listening. And here we go. Let's go. Welcome to System Updates, chat. Welcome to Sister Updates. We are kicking off our new segment in our stream called System Updates. This is where uh, every week with the intent um, to go over uh, three articles that I found uh, that is one photography related, two uh, technology related, and three uh, video game like industry related and everything. This is the first article, y'all. This is the first article. We're kicking off with my very first passionate you know, uh, hobby, which is photography. So, you know, we all talk about how important it is to finding a niche, um, in your respective like field or like content creation. So, you know, like, um, for me it's photography and for that it is, um, photography for me it's uh, like product photography. I dabble in food photography. Uh, so, a little bit so but what if you like discover something new called like iris photography think about that iris photography so iris photography um this was this kind of photography was developed and created by elias branch who's a entrepreneur photographer uh he focused more on nature photography and macro shots. Um, and like he has like 13 years of like multimedia experience and graphic designing, right? So um, basically what Iris Photography combines, it combine, it has a combination of macro, fine art and commercial photography. Like look how dope this is. Like look how dope this is. Um, the, the, the photography, like literally it's your eyes. Like these are the irises of your eyes for it. So, um, you know, when I wish I can like, I wish there was a, like a, a button on here that I can take the picture so you can see. So this is like an example right here. So most of his biggest clientele are couples for it. Um, but the super cool thing about it is that like your iris are like, they're, they're both unique. Your eyes are so, yeah, your eye irises are unique in each eye. Um, so his process from what I was reading is that like, he takes a photo of both of your eyes so you can see which one you like, and he can combine it and do like the graphic designing and everything for it. So like, I'm just saying like, look how so like detailed and fine this is particular shape you will make make an interesting piece yo like it's so cool like um later down in the article like you can see like he does kind of a, um actually yeah there we go like let me just do this photo right here so i can line this up so like as you can see like Normally, like his biggest clientele are um, are um, couples, uh, which would make sense, right? Yo, Andrew, what's going on? I know, right? Yo, like it, it's so cool. It's such a unique, like, um, like concept. Like I would have never thought anything of that. Like it's so cool to actually something, see something like that. Yo, especially, and then like, and then like you come in and then like, you just come in, like it, it's, it's crazy. Today I realized you're not a dad joke bot. <laughs> no, I actually just find dad jokes and just like to share them a lot. It's hilarious. Um, But yeah, like, the cool thing is that like, you know, because of they're not, because your irises are um, not identical and they're different, 
like you have two different choices of options you can use and combine for it so this is so dope because of the fact that like you know what was explained was the iris like the blue iris that's there on here is well well the two that's right there in the corner they combine to clash well you know cl oh my gosh where's my camera angles at there we go clash <laughs> because um it represents like you know what your couple your respective you know uh person that you're interested in uh it's a symbol of love unity and your worlds coming together which i thought was pretty cool and pretty dope um you know you can do like family style portraits as you can see with the family next to the eyes um you know with the mother and the father and like their kids like it's so cool how they got their combination of everything and then the graphic designing but not only that from what i read um how dope would this be oh yeah definitely andrew yo definitely like um no problem at all um yeah we do a little photography here um on the stream i usually edit some stuff on the stream um, when i get the chance i get some downtime um but yeah definitely so like how cool this would be to you know get get this as a like a wedding invitation or a wedding thank you Oh yeah, so how dope this would be um, receiving this as like a wedding invitation or like a wedding card or like a card in general or a event uh, ceremony or anything of that nature. Like I thought this was such a cool, unique um, experience. Um, you know, you can use this as like family portraits. You can use this as like wedding advice. This can actually be used like in event photography. Like think about this, like if you're having an event and your um you know your guests can come in get a photo like this to take home with them to kind of remember like the day or the stuff that was going on like i think it's so freaking cool um yeah i think that was it for it like yeah like it, it it's so cool and it's like the thing is that it's it's not common here in the states like it's picking up he's um international so it's kind of picking up in like Europe now. And then like, you might have like a handful here that's in the States, but I, yo, I think this was such a cool concept. Cause I definitely found the article and was like, what the hell is Iris photography? And like, when you really think about it, like it's a really unique piece of artwork. It's not just like a photo, like it's legit artwork. You can see from like the colliding of the two irises, um, the road for the iris, or just a photo of the iris itself. Like, you know, they use this as a logo or or like just their family, you know, their their wedding, their couple uh, photo. Like, it's such a cool concept. Um, so that was like the photography bit of with it. If, if, you, uh, if you guys want to, there we go. If you guys want to read the article it's yourself like at a at a later date or like look into it some more um i did that rather do that than a than a regular ass fam photos yeah yo it's so cool like seeing something like that it's so unique that's what it is yo could you imagine like doing this yo when i was reading the article he literally only works well like work as far as um taking like clients and doing like the actual photography work he does it like once a week all the other time he's like editing and like doing like cleaning up the photo and doing all that's all he does. he takes clients like once a week that's it and makes a, a a pretty decent leave i was like wow like that's so dope and he and um from the article that i read it was literally like you know he's not doing it to he he so he has a course um He's not doing it more so of like so as like a money grab thing. He's a very humble entrepreneur from what I saw. Um, so I thought it was just super cool and super unique um, in the photography realm. Cause you know, you always got like, um, you know, the, the I would say the couple things that I've seen that's very unique are like toy photography. Um, there was this like one uh, Instagrammer or photographer I found and he takes like, uh like um like superhero toys and he makes like a fire photo out of them like he has one like with superman and like the toy superman is like blocking his 
um his fists or stopping his fists and then like he he does like that so like that's something that's unique so you know that's why i go back to like finding your own niche uh you know everyone loves to do food photography listen everyone loves to do product photography desk setups um portraits weddings but like you know those are known things like if you if you stand out like what is what is a way that you can stand out this is definitely like one way for it so so yes that is um your your uh i guess weekly update your weekly update from the photography side on here let me ask you guys how many of y'all know what ces is i'm, I'm just asking know what ces is or if you have an interest in technology then this next article definitely just might be like the wave for you um let me show y'all right here so samson right samson um so this past was it a couple days ago from i think january 5th to 7th um, there's something here in the States called, um, CES. So CES is short for consumer electronics show. Uh, so basically this is like all the consumer electronics, TVs, uh, smart devices, uh, anything of that nature. This is where you will find, uh, this, this information, like emerging technologies. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure like I saw like a crazy cool, like LG monitor or TV that's like hella curved it was some ridiculousness so um samson has is introduced uh a portable projector uh that is called uh the freestyle from what I is like literally like when i first saw this i was like yo i can literally take this anywhere with me what if you can what if you can have a huge smart tv anywhere you can go chat I'm just saying anywhere you can go, you can bring this here. Um, so what this is, uh, basically it's a portable projector. Um, they dispute, they dispute, disputed, Lord. they debuted this device, um, at CES, uh, this year. Um, it's designed as a smart speaker, but it also has ambient lighting for it. Basically what Samsung did was they took all their smart TV features and you could do things like project your Netflix shows. You can like cast to your phone. I mean, I don't cast, so I guess that would be the equivalent if you have an Apple device like AirPlay. Um, and you can use voice commands with this thing right here. Like it's so cool and unique for it. Like that's, that's this is literally the device that's right here. Literally that is the device for it. Um, with it, it is uh you can use this up to like a hundred inches on the screen if you have a huge ass wall this can project that um you can use it on your ceiling so you know if you if you really want to up your netflix and chill game i'm just saying if you really want to up up like really do it big on your netflix and chill like I'm just saying you can, you know, this is something you can look into. I saw that'd be perfect for your game slash spare room. Yo, it's, it's so nice, but it's so the cool thing about it is that is it's so unique, uh, because you can take this on your camping trip. So like blue, I know you do like your hikes, um, once you start back up and everything for it, like if you guys are going to do like some type of camping, um, if it went that way. And y'all want to have a movie night, yeah. I could literally just bring this device and like hook it up to somewhere. If like, you know, de depending on how they have it set up and how they have the trails and all the camping sites and all that. Um, so a couple cool things about it is that um they're kind of pushing this more. I'm I'ma get uh, I'ma get to that part. It is it's just to let you guys know, chat, that like projectors in general are normally expensive so i just want to disclaim that before i get to like how much it actually costs for it um the cool thing about this is though like like samsung is really deciding to push this more as a as a as a tv um 
but it has like 360 like movie theater sound and like a vibe in the audience and all that for it um so that was the thing so these are a couple features that i found uh about the freestyle which is it can project anywhere between 30 to 100 inches so if you got a little corner in the wall versus you got a whole like wide ass area that you can use it from you're good um it can rotate 180 degrees um so and check this out the thing i like about this is that it has auto leveling auto focusing and auto keystone now auto leveling is just like you know they it, it levels out and everything auto focus everybody know what that is camera auto focus and all that so what is auto keystone auto keystone is basically how you turn if you if you played around with any projectors how you turn it if your projector is not straight directly on a horizontal so like like i'm looking straight here actually i am that is not I, anyway i'm looking like straight here but if i was here it would turn me to think that i'm in straight so that's kind of it, it kind of does like a trapezoid uh um for like the um actually they had a, a great I don't think I have it on here for it. That's what they had it um, for it. Because I had to look it up and see. I was like, what the hell is Keystone for it? As many times as I've seen it, I never understood what it was. Basically, like, if you had your screen in the catacornered and your projector wasn't straight on, it was projecting from the side, you can just kind of, uh, instead of physically moving the projector, you could just change the angle of the lighting for it to project it even on the projector. That's what it is. Um, it has sort of another cool feature that I like that I read was it has smart calibration. If you don't have a white wall for your colors. So, you know, most people like the best thing to do to project this um, on pro to project a projector on a screen is it for it to be white or your wall to be white. However, the smart calibration compensates for that so like i assume if you have like a beige color wall um that it would adjust the colors um to make it look like it's normal if it was on a white wall so i was like oh all right cool bet that's 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 a dope feature to have on there um it has USB C and hdmi um however it can only do hdmi 1080p so it 1080p HD quality. That's it. So no 4K or anything, which is kind of like, honestly, that at 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 that kind of size, that would make a lot more sense for it. It's it's literally that's that's the thing for it. Like 1080p HD, it's more reasonable for it. It's less than two pounds. Um, the cool thing also is that because it's USB C, technically. You can charge the you can like run this off of a battery bank i'm just saying i'm just saying those are their words not mine but you know when you really think about it you can write you could really like charge this off a battery bank for it so that's so cool and because how versatile it is um you can literally turn this projector into a lamp now hear me out they have an adapter because technically all a projector is, is under on here. It can project between 30 and 100 inches. It can rotate 100 180 degrees. It can, it has auto theater quality sound. It has auto focus, auto leveling, auto keystone in. It has smart calibration. It has um, HD quality, 1080p HD. It's less than two pounds. Can be powered off a USB-C bank. Uh, can be turned into a lamp with its adapter because remember projectors are only lenses. I mean they're only lenses So you can project light regularly on here for it So we got between a thousand and fifteen hundred The accessories in here includes a battery you the accessories that will be available later this year for purchase includes a battery base a socket adapter skins and a case Pre-order is available now for $900. 
you can get all that for nine hundred dollars listen it's a little sleek looking thing right here i'm just saying imagine being in your bed and watching youtube videos all day just looking up that's it you already laying there i'm glad y'all had kind of like the right idea that it was gonna be around like that mark okay okay less than what i thought but still the price of a decent tv correct that's what they're pushing it for they're pushing it as a smart tv so it's kind of like a that's what the route that samsung went for it it's a smart tv but it's a smart projector in slash entertainment device and like from what i saw it was gonna have you know you can even use like oh you, um the freestyle you can change the, the skins that they have you can change it to pink green or gold you you could get a projector for like 49.99 but you gotta always remember um just because like this is like an it thing that i learned like the projectors are not the most expensive thing the lenses to replace the projector is what's going to cost more. Lenses for the projector is what costs more for it. Um, because like, now, mind you, this is just a little bit of a, um, of like what I learned. It's, it's, it's more on the enterprise level. Cause you know, we spend like, I think like, I think maybe five, 500 for a projector that we use in our classrooms, but to replace like the bulb, it's like, like $300 to replace the bulb. I mean, now mind you, you get like, like a shit ton of, um, hours in your bulb. So, you know, I'm pretty sure it'll last quite some time before the bulb finally burns out and everything for it. So with that being said you know i think this is a pretty cool device uh if you guys want to check out the article there goes the article right there um you know if you want to look into it click on some other stuff and go through it and, and all that good stuff um that's that's the article on there so our last uh article for this week that's video game related i i so Check it. So what if you had an outdoor gaming console? And this is what brings to our next article. It's a gaming console that was also day, uh, day spew. I keep words are hard. They also debuted at CES called Pico. And basically it's, it's advertised as the world's first outdoor game console, right? So now I know what you're thinking. Like it's a game. Do I have any other pictures on here? No, I have no other pictures. So this is the main picture right here. Um, I know what you're saying is like a game console. Like what, like, what is this so different? So this is actually aimed for, um, kids that's between four and 12 years old. Um, so it's a portable screen free system. It encourage, uh, like I said, kids to get outside and engage in physical activity um there's no wi-fi so no wi-fi no lte no 5g no nothing like that but what it does is it uses a radio network to communicate with the other controllers and also um to like help communicate like as you can see like in the photo it has like multiple controls and all that good stuff. And uh, the cool thing about it, like it plays like our classic games that we did. Um, now I saw two that was on there. We'll go to the website after, after I explain it so like you can see the actual games for it. So it uses a radio network to communicate with each other, with all the content, with the other like controllers that are there. Um, you play classic games. Some of the classic games you have like hide and seek, you have whack-a-mole, um they had some co like kaleidoscope and i think like some zombie one so like um later on we'll go into that to their actual website so i can show you the games that it is so how it works right is kids use one of the controllers to scan a card game so you get these cards that has the game on them one kid scans it um also to know that it started up you have audio and LED lights are used as cues to actually start playing the game, right? Um, it has a built-in accelerator uh, to detect the measured movements 
and sense players are near and are uh, near or far from each other. So think about like um, hot cold, right? Like the controller can tell if it's if you're near somebody for it. That's I think that's a dope feature for hiding hide, hide and seek because you know people like to hide in some crazy ass situations when we were like kids. Like I, I kid you not, I was playing hide and seek with my cousins. My cousins would go hide underneath the car in the driveway. What the hell was we thinking when we was growing up? I don't know what we was thinking, but um that is like what was going on with it and so i think that's a cool feature and then also okay like i'm just gonna let y'all know in my opinion i think this is great i remember plenty of times uh having this happen to me and then uh they i mean clearly they regretted it because you know they underestimated me but the controller and the console automatically creates teams um when the game starts so now you don't ever get that whole um i'm the last kid that was picked mark for it uh you don't get that anymore so because the console itself will automatically just uh put it together you know put the teams together and then you don't have to go pick 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 and everything for it uh trainer thank you for the uh rem thank you for the uh follow appreciate it um so with that being said, also, uh, adapts, it, it adapts to the challenge level based on profici proficiency, uh, during the game. So basically it want to make sure that the, like when, that, when kids are playing the game, that everyone has a fair shot for the game for it. Like that is so dope. Um, and as a result, this means that a lot of kids, um, it's idea for all kids of all abilities to be able to play and access and have fun uh, with other uh, kids uh, for it. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so another dope thing about this is the fact that they have cars designed for kids with special needs too. Like, so like if you have a special need, so if you know a special needs child or you have a special needs child, like this game has games for them to play so they can do here so with that um it includes uh oh, lee thank you for the bits thank you a lot of people said less than 200 dollars. so we had three people that said less than 200 and we have somebody that says between two and 300 okay so uh this console right it includes four chargers two USB-C charging cables, five games, uh, five game cards, wrist straps, and four helper cards, and extra games and controllers can be purchased separately. The total starter kit starts at $249. $249. So, like, let's take a look, and I see... So this is it right here. Like kids literally go out and play and that you can see the scan of the card here um, for the physical, social, mental, where's the game? So this is what they're actually promoting is that uh, they're getting outside to play and all that for it. It has an interactive technology, interactive play without a screen. Like see what it says, no hassle for Wi-Fi, GPS, 4G, it works anywhere, anytime. Just click the random one. Nice. I don't know if you're willing to pay more than two hundred dollars, though. Um, especially if I'm already buying a Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation. It's like playing the prices right. <laughs> I know, right? Like I, I'm definitely gonna keep this in mind now. Like honestly, if you want, to, want your kid to go outside, just download Pokemon Go and go on their phone or something. <laughs> Yo. That's, that's not a bad idea, actually. That's not a bad idea. I, I do like the concept of just like download Pokemon Go, but I think this is great aimed for like those children that might not have a smartphone or those parents that don't wanna have a smartphone for their kids right now. Um, so like, you know, it's aimed for between four and 12 year olds. Um, so, you know, like four, five, 
six. Um, I can see this being used like in a summer camp, like a young, like a, a summer camp situation. Uh, that's for like the the younger kids, um, cause you know we want them to get out here. And then how you do it is, of course, you gotta charge it. You just bring them all together. You scan the card right here. And then that's pretty much like how the game starts. And then where's the games? I saw the games. Okay, games, there we go. So yeah, you have a game called like Lightning Bolt, Spy Hunt, Kaleidoscope. You have the Whack-A-Mole, Hide and Seek, Zombie Run. You could do math stuff on here? See, I didn't even know you could do math stuff on here. You have Sequence, Three Musketeers. That's That's pretty cool. So like they have pretty cool game. I I think this is a, I think this is a great game too for um, special needs, uh, because like technically you know I mean I don't know if someone's special needs I'm sure they they can play video like regular video game consoles but like I think this is a great like lower kid area of for it in my opinion, um, but you know this is just one of the new technologies that came out of. Um, out of CES uh, 2022. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, these are some of the articles that I found. Uh, if you want to like, you know, know more about the article or anything like that, here's a link to the article. Um, so um, I thought that was pretty cool. I need to like, clearly I didn't fix that. Um, but yeah, so uh, that I would say is our, um, first session of uh, system updates.